It was, it was you great. never worked your way to New York, to the clubs in New York to, to No, and, it was, and it's been very tempting. And ever since Clint Eastwood did what he, yep, ju he, what did he just did by taking piano lessons at that age. Mm -hmm. For it, a movie, actually. Yeah, he liked jazz piano. And he said if he could take piano lessons and learn how to play, anybody could. Mm -hmm. And he gave his own concert in Carnegie Hall. And you can't help oh, but I didn't realize yeah, that. Yeah, he did that. Yeah. And, and I can't uh, help but get that in the back of my mind that I got a musical background that I used to play. And then he comes up and he takes lessons. It would probably be very easy for you. I don't know that it would be. I don't think it would. My hands are gone, just gone. Really, but really you know, not. people would, would pay to see you do chopsticks. I've thought of going downtown and getting in a bar. Sure. And do piano bar. Gee, what a, we have what no a we have no piano bar here. No. And uh, but on the other hand, I don't think the students are ready for piano bar. But just old there's folks too, might like there's it. There's too many love songs played in a mm. piano bar, and students yeah. well, don't go that way. You've got to find some funny name and play it that yeah. way. You may have gotten a new job out of this. Yeah. Show. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? And and of course, we know you're not thinking of retirement. Yeah. You are. I have been. Yeah. Since I started taking people out to dinner, I am. Yes. You, know, <laughs> you are going to be a dating fool. I can no, tell by looking I'm at not. you. Yes, you no, are. I'm not. I kind of thought you were going to give it up when Vince did. I really did. I well, thought... it's close. My spotter also the same way. Uh, he's uh, well, of course they're all younger than I am. So, but my spotter has been with us forty years. That's a but long time. But you still love it. Oh yeah. Then you won't quit. Yeah, but the buses are brutal. You have no airport here. Yeah, that, oh. I don't understand it. That is my pet peeve about Clark County. Oh, it's brutal. It's ridiculous going oh, to Atlanta to go somewhere. When you land at 3 in the morning because yes. you had a night game somewhere, and now you got to wait for them to unload the plane and fill the four buses. There's always four. And you get the four buses filled up. Now, by this time, it's 10 minutes to 4. And now you get in the bus, and you got to go to Athens. Your car is parked out at the mm -hmm. girls' sure. softball complex, mm -hmm. <laughs> and here you come. And boy, every bump gets you madder and madder. I mean, it's it's tough. It sure it is. But yeah. you know what? You can't give it up. Everybody associates Georgia uh, football they with certainly you, do. and I mean, we hang on your words. I mean, I wouldn't give it up until I just had to walk away from it. You uh, know what, Larry? The LSU. I think it was the LSU game. That's the game we. That was the game we mm -hmm. liked doing. The national announcers, I was listening to the game. I'm not a big sports enthusiast, mm -hmm. but I was listening to the game and reading, I think. My husband was watching the game here at home. And the national announcers in the second half said, we want to play you a little tape of Larry Munson, the local um, voice of the dogs. And they played you, they replayed you calling some great play we made. Oh, really? And that really got my interest, and that was the day I said, we have got to get hold of Larry Munson. Well, they've been awfully nice to me. They're all friendly. You know, they all know I've been around forever and ever. Uh -huh. And we talk a lot in the booth, the various the, guys yeah. that come in. Are they, I wondered if they're actually in the booth with you. No. Oh, no. I never know when they the do The national that. guys, I thought they were, I uh -oh. didn't know where they were. I never really? know when they're going to do it or anything of the kind. Well, they sure taped. Did you know that it happened? Yeah. They taped you it, and played it. I yeah. thought it was wonderful. It's, it's been done a few times. Yeah. All right, I want to ask you a football question. Now, at about this point, my husband is shaking in his boots. He knows I have void of sports knowledge. But I'm going to ask you this anyway because he needs a little perking up. Do you think a team that doesn't have to play their little regional championship has a better chance at winning a national championship? Do you think, yeah, that doesn't have a conference playoff Yeah, the conference game? doings. Uh, absolutely. That seems to be a question in my house. I don't understand. Well, I remember, I think it's I remember when the discussion showed up at Florida. Sure. And Spurrier mentioned how he was forced to play Florida State at the end of the schedule and then the conference championship game yes. up here in the Dome and that there's just nothing left then to take if on. he's going to play somebody for the number one thing on New Year's. I see. So you would be in favor of that. Uh, Any chance that that would be stopped? Conference championships? No, I don't think so. There's too much money in it. That's it. That's it's all, all money. Television. No money. It's always television and it's always the almighty dollar, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it kind is. Kind of unfortunate. Yeah. God, when I think I played piano some nights, made seven or eight dollars. <laughs> if you... I um, wouldn't take you to the movies. If you, go, if you go to playing the piano and do not call us... Well... I'm telling you, you're going to get a gig out well, of this. Well, uh, no, I don't know if I'll do that or not, cause, but I have thought of it. I really have thought of I it. I think you should do it. And I bought a piece of sheet music. 
And Have you I got a piano? And I haven't, no. And I haven't got the nerve to take it to a piano. And I've got a young son. I have a genius of a son. A genius. I know you do. Oh, God. In what area? Uh, the uh, music field? He's a minister. A hell not. Nice. He's a young minister. He's 27 years old. And he's the head of the music in the church. Uh -huh. Oh. And this is the church that paid for his college education. How wonderful. A big Baptist church in Atlanta. Uh -huh. Send him to Samford, et cetera. And he is so smart, and we're in Borders, right here in Athens. And he and I and his wife are in Borders, looking at books and music and stuff like that. And he comes up with this book, and it says, How to Write Music. And I says, what are you, you going to do that with that? He says, I'm going to write a CD. I says, Jonathan, you don't know how to do that. He's a guitar guy. Mm -hmm. I bought him thousands of dollars worth of guitars, <laughs> and he really can play the guitar, but not like a great jazz guy. I don't mean uh -huh. that. And he couldn't play anything, I don't think, to get the college students And he excited. started as a youth minister. Yeah. And that would have been the way to kind of interest He taught him. himself. He wrote all the parts for a six- or seven-piece band, made oh, his goodness. own Yeah, made his own uh, CD. I, don't, I didn't have any of that. I could walk to a, to a, stand behind a piano guy and, and tell him he just played an F sharp diminished mm -hmm. or he's an E flat seven or whatever he's, he's doing. way ahead of me. See, I, knew, I know that stuff, but Jonathan can just sit and write it down. I mean, he can really go. I can't believe that. But you know, you said something about your own musical talent. You, play, you played from your ear. Yeah, yeah, I did. You could hear the notes and then you could translate them on the keyboard and that is, is why piano bars. I, I had a job. Performers are so one good. of the finest jobs I ever had was lasted about nine weeks until the drummer one night took a gun out and shot over the head of the guy singing. Because the guy singing wanted to sing love songs like Al Hibbler or Billy Eckstein were singing, oh. those great yeah. black vocalists from mm -hmm. a long time ago. But this job lasted nine weeks, and I was the only white musician, and there was six. <laughs> black musicians, mm -hmm. and it was in a black barbecue place called the Rum Boogie Club. Where was it? Minneapolis, Minneapolis. up in North Minneapolis. Uh -huh. Boy, you talk about music. Sure. Oh, that Is, was the greatest job I ever had. <laughs> and, and what were you, 23 years old? Oh, less. Oh, yeah. Oh, my word. 17 and a half or you're so. You're kidding. Oh, yeah. Um, you Tell me something about your sister. You mentioned her oh, when she, I accosted yeah. you. Yeah. He told me, this is what he told me about his sister. I've got a sister oh. that's older than anybody you've ever oh, heard of. Well, yeah. she isn't. She's I a mere 87. I call 87 her. 87 is just I, I, I play bridge with people that 90 are in the 90s. I call her I know old, lots of 90 year olds. old hawk face. Oh, now that's not she, a Oh, nice she's thing. on the she phone with me. And, oh, yeah, she's got to make <laughs> sure that my trust that. fund is all right. And his have, wills, and his have I seen the new listing now for IRAs and all yeah, this kind of yeah. stuff? She's on me all the time. And is your will up to date? All the time yeah. she's on me on the <laughs> will. Mean, that's what sisters do, don't you think? Yes, yes they, girl. They I've got two brothers, do. and I'm constantly on the horn. Uh, both of them have wives. And in fact, the wives will tell me, Catherine, mention this to whichever brother. And, and so I just kind of get at them. Well, yeah. certainly senility doesn't run in your family. No. I mean, you, you're as strong mentally, I bet, as you were 50 years oh, ago. No, I'm not I'm, I found out since I started taking out young people to dinner <laughs> that I'm not, I'm not strong mentally anymore. I really am not. I don't believe that. No. These young folks have really um, put a case on you. You clearly need to be with us medium old dolls. <laughs> and we're going to crash your movie club. You just give me a little details. We're going to crash it one of these days. We'll just, I would love to see a movie. I've, yeah. I've, I really have had to learn in some of the restaurants the best way to get in and out. And what it, which because, is? Because, it, because it? well, I don't want people to bother us on their way in or mm -hmm. our way out. Mm -hmm. I won't bother you and in the I, movie club and I like I did at the club. I don't want to have to introduce somebody who's in my movie group and introduce her to people that I know in there, and some of them are ex-players and stuff yeah. like that. So how do you get so, in and oh, Why don't you wear a disguise? Every single restaurant is different. I come in and out of every one different. I really do. Do you ever go through the kitchen? I have. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. And this just started now. This, this mm -hmm. only started a couple months ago. Do people in Athens bother you when you go out in public? Do they ask for autographs? And They do a little, but that doesn't bother me as much as a person that just comes up to the back door and knocks on the door. Oh, my and, word. And you don't know who they are, and they want you to sign some stuff. Now, that, that bothers me a little bit. Do you bit. go to the door? Yeah, sure. 
Oh, I'll do it. He I came see. to the door today. Yeah, I signed lots of stuff. Yeah, how come he came to the front door? Well, that's the polite <laughs> thing to do. Now that we are such good friends, Larry, I'm going to come in the back way through the garage from now on. Oh, yeah. gosh, she's going to be over there. I know. I, I'd fall in love with him. <laughs> but don't tell my husband. All right, Larry, let me bring up something that may embarrass you just a little, but I'm telling you, you made a big impression on another coach at Georgia, one Jack Bowerly. When he was oh, in Greece, yeah. you did such a fabulous thing, started the Jack Bowerly yeah, scholarship. That's something that should have been done a long you time You absolutely ago. broke his heart and touched him deeply with that. Yes, I know. He's, he's been very kind. He's written he's, me well, some he, notes. He, he says said some you've things. been very kind. <laughs> well. And we agreed. We interviewed him, oh, maybe a month ago and had a great show with him. And, and But all he wanted to do was talk about you and what a fabulous thing you'd done. I'll he was you. highly, highly gratified by it. Well, He's being awfully kind. You have been an angel. <laughs> now, how easy it is, is it being interviewed by a couple of cable divas? You just remember now to forget. You don't know where I'm eating, and you nope. don't know who I'm eating with. <laughs> no, nope, I'm not going to tell a thing. If you see two people sneak along the side of the bar. I won't yeah. even look at you. Yeah, well, and I won't ask for your autograph, but I'm telling you, you'll see us again, Larry. Is that right? Thank you so much for thank being you so with us. Much. Well, thank you're you. You're a dreamboat. Thank you, guys. Athens. We know you're going to love seeing our guests tonight. See you next week.